All right, so today what we're going to be talking about is uh, passive range of motion assessment of the ankle and the foot, specifically as it's related to plantar flexion and dorsiflexion. Now, uh, ideally, you would be next to the patient like as such, right? But in doing so, I'm going to block some of the view. So I'm going to come more at a kind of a posterior or even uh, slightly uh, angled so that you can continue to see uh, what's going on here. Uh, first and foremost, you want the individual to be in this 90 degrees of knee flexion position. From here, what you're going to do is you're going to look at the hind foot or whole foot, because as you move the hind foot, the whole foot's going to kind of come along for the ride. Then you're going to do your best to stabilize the hind foot, maybe just midfoot, and then finally the forefoot. Keeping in mind, all of these areas are tied together via the interdorsal ligaments and different shared joint spaces. And so are you really going to be able to stabilize the hind foot while the midfoot is moving? Right, uh, but you still want to get as, as much of an assessment there as possible. And so the, the pieces that we're going to look at are we're going to look at plantar flexion of the whole foot, midfoot, forefoot, and dorsiflexion of the hind foot, midfoot, and forefoot. All right. So for the very first one, uh, what we're going to ask the individual to do is to plantar flex or point their toes up towards the ceiling. Now at this point, we're going to provide the overpressure. Uh, when we do the entire foot, you're going to grasp the forefoot and the hind foot and you're really going to take the individual to end range. Now, if the individual complains of any pain, you want to be mindful of that, so stay in communication with them. In this position, my patient's head and face are facing away from me, so I need to maintain that, that uh, communication and open lines uh, as I do this if there's any pain or, or symptom provocation. From here, what I'm using is my left hand to push the calcaneus further into a plantar flex position, and my uh, right hand to bring the forefoot into a greater amount of plantar flexion as well. From there, what I'm going to do is I'm going to stabilize my hind foot. I can either do that by stabilizing the calcaneus or coming and using kind of a C grip to stabilize both the calcaneus as well as a little bit of the talus. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to move my hand approximately just to the midfoot. And then kind of a good landmark for that would be the navicular um, on the more medial aspect. And here I'm just going to work on the midfoot in terms of plantar flexioning. My, my left hand in this case is uh, in a stabilized position. I'm not helping at all with my left hand. Just the right hand is performing the activity. And then finally, I'm going to switch my hands. My left hand is going to come at the base of the fifth met uh, head. I'm going to stabilize now across the fifth met to the cuneiforms and across the more plantar aspect. And now I'm just going to be looking at the forefoot and taking that individual through a degree of plantar flexion, that being from the distal metatarsals into the phalanges. It's not uncommon at this point, if you're working on an individual's toes into those plantar flex positions, that there be a pop or a cavitation. That's not a real normal position for the toes and phalanges to go into. Make sure though that you're not overpressuring them to the point of pain. The next piece is dorsiflexion. And so now they're gonna be going just into the opposite position. Uh, your left hand, in this case, my left hand is going to come uh, right at the calcaneus. My right hand is going to come right uh, proximal to the met heads. And I'm going to use those together to get that extra degree of dorsiflexion. So they're working together or jointly. That's whole foot. If I just want to look at the midfoot, I'm going to, again, stabilize either from the top or from the back on my hind foot. And I'm going to move my right hand more proximally to the midfoot, find the navicular and the fifth metatarsal, stabilize left hand, and now just work on dorsiflexion to the midfoot. Again, probably that hind foot is going to come along for the ride, even if I'm doing what I believe to be an adequate job of stabilizing. Finally, we're going to switch our hands and move to the forefoot, find uh, the metatarsals uh, as they uh, come into the MTP metatarsal phalangeal joint and here you're going to take the individual into another degree of dorsiflexion. So again whole foot, midfoot, forefoot assessment or hind foot so to speak for both dorsiflexion and plantar flexion. Uh, make sure you know your landmarks, make sure that you're palpating if there are any sensitive or painful structures and make sure that you're staying in close communication with your patient as you go through this assessment. Have a try with a peer or a colleague and let me know if there's any questions.